Hi, this is Dave and welcome to To The Table, a series of videos where I review and discuss various board and card games, looking at them from a family perspective. Today we're going to be taking a preview at the game Pairs from Cheap Ass Games. Now Pairs is a two to six player pub game. It's a press your luck game where you try to score the least amount of points by not scoring any pairs in the game. Let's take a look at this game, how it's played, and I'll come back and I'll give you my thoughts. Okay, let's take a look at Pairs and this deck that comes with the game and I just wanted to say for the purpose of this review this is the fruit deck that I am using for the purpose of this demonstration I know that during the Kickstarter campaign there are other art skins that are going to be available for this particular game the only difference being the artwork the deck construction and how the game is played is going to be the same for all of them so first of all let me talk to you about how this deck is constructed and if you can see here there is a bunch of different values. I've got a bunch of different pictures here of fruits and vegetables. And if you notice here that there is not a balanced um, construction of how this deck is made, and that's because this deck is made in a pyramid. And the number of cards in the deck corresponds to the values of the cards here. So, for example, in this deck, there's only going to be one pair. There's going to be two peaches, three cherries, four blueberries, all the way up until we have ten onions in this deck. So this game is uh, definitely, you can see right here how it's set up. This is a pressure lock type game that how these components are going to play into this. So these are the different types of cards and how this deck is constructed. I'm going to go ahead and shuffle this up and show you how to play the game. Okay, so I've gone ahead and I have shuffled up this deck of cards and there's a couple things that I want to explain to you. Uh, there's another card that comes with the game here that you can use as a deck shield, which you can put on the bottom of the deck so that uh, the players cannot see what the bottom card of the deck is when you're handling the cards. Secondly, there on the other side, it has a little bit of the rules, how to play the game and how the deck is constructed. And then also at the bottom, it has the scoring guidelines for the number of players. I'm going to demonstrate this game as a four player game and so it says here that the loser is the first player to reach the target score which for four players is 16 points. So points are bad in this game. We do not want to score points. Now I'm going to uh, show you how this game is played. I've gone ahead and I've shuffled up these cards and what I'm going to do is I'm going to burn off the top five cards of this deck. So I'm take the top five cards here and I'm going to put them off to the side out of play. Now what I'm going to do is each player is going to be dealt a card face up. So we've got a 3, a 10, a 10, and a 4. Now what's going to happen is whoever has the lowest valued card in play is going to be the first player for this particular hand and they have two choices. They can either draw a card or they can fold. Now um, if we draw a card we will again, we will just reveal a card face up next to them. Each player will have a choice to do this, and usually on the first turn, everybody is going to draw a card. Now, this is a pressure luck type game, so you want to, uh, you know, so at least you might as well live a little bit. Now, what I've done is I've gone around here, first go around here, and I have uh, revealed all of these cards. Now, if I choose to, I can continue to draw another card, or I can fold. Now again, you want to try to not score points. So if you opt to fold, you're going to automatically score points. Now on here, I'm feeling pretty comfortable here with a three and a seven. If I draw another three, I will score three points. If I draw another seven, I'll draw I'll score seven points because I would again I would get a what's called a pair. I would score a pair. If I chose to fold, I would take the lowest card value or lowest card in play and I would score that. So right now if I were to fold I would take this card as I would take two points and I would score it. But I'm going to continue to press on here. So we have a three, a seven, a four. This one's going to continue to go on. Same thing here. Ten, a seven, and a four, and a four, and a seven, and a two. Right now we're doing pretty good. I'm going to continue on. Here I've drawn a three. Now I have scored a pair. So with these three here I'm going to take one of these threes, put it over in the um, out of play and that's going to be my scoring deck. The other cards now, everybody else didn't score any points and they're going to be discarded and we're going to continue to do this again. Playing cards here. Again, the lowest player will will um, be the first player. So they're going to draw a card, draw a card, draw a card, 
draw a card. We're going to draw again, draw again. He now scores a nine. These are all discarded. And this is going to continue to go around and around and around um, until the player reaches the target uh, score of 16 points. Now, if you notice right here, this player here, we scored three. He's already scored nine. He's sitting in bad shape. If he scores another high-valued card, he's going to be the first player that's going to be out. And he will be the loser. Everybody else will win. And so, however, you have wagers and stuff, he's going to potentially be the loser. Now, we continue and go through this through this game. Uh, you know, once we've gone through this whole deck of cards now, if we've gone, if we've exhausted this thing, what we will do now is those five cards that we burnt off will now get shuffled back into the deck. You know, we'll sh and what we'll do now is we'll shuffle this back up and we'll again burn off five cards, put them off the plate and we will continue to go through this. So the cards that have been used, they're constantly changing. So you don't necessarily know uh, what cards are going to be making up that deck, which adds to the pressure luck value of this game. And so that's pretty much how you play pairs. Okay, so let's talk about pairs from cheap ass games. And first of all, this game is a blast to play. And the reason why it's a blast to play is because it is so simple. You don't have to uh, go into any really complex rules. You can teach somebody to play this game in less than 30 seconds. And you are ready to play and you can have a great time with it. And you know, the game is billed as a classic pub game. And if you do not go to a pub, you can take this to a restaurant. You can take this with you um, to school. You can have it in your backpack. You can stick it in your purse, in your pocket. You can always have it with you. Because if you look, like, I mean, this is it. There's one small deck of cards. So you can have it with you all the time and play it. Now, this game, uh, looking at this particular version, I really like the artwork of this fruit deck. Now, um, there's a, on Kickstarter, there is a new art skin that's going to be for this game. And I really like that too. And it's kind of got that nice kind of almost like an old world uh, medieval sketchy feel, even though it takes place in a fantasy world. And in that fantasy world, uh, gaming was very important to those people. So it kind of fits right along in with pairs. Now let me talk about the gameplay of this game. And this is what makes it so fun, is that it's just press your luck. There's no, there's no real strategy. You have two choices to make, draw a card or fold. That's it. And you just kind of hope that if you choose to draw a card, that you don't score a pair. So you kind of have to look, and I guess if you're looking at the strategy, is you have to weigh the risk of what cards are going to pop up. Now, what makes that strategic choice um, kind of challenging is the deck construction of itself because this deck construction is what's called a pyramid and how it is built. Like you have one one in there all the way up to 10 tens. So when you shuffle that deck up, you have a greater chance of, of drawing a higher valued card. So if you're sitting with a seven or an eight or a nine, or if you have all three of those cards, Chances are when it's your turn again, you may want to consider folding, otherwise you're going to score a big lump of points. So, um, so that, you know, that kind of adds the, I guess, the element, the meat of the game is your decision making. Other than that, it's very social, you're just very out, you, you, the game, the hands play very quickly, you saw me play through those. Um, it doesn't require a whole lot of thought, so you can continue to have conversations, this is a great for if you're out and you order some appetizers or something like that, you're just playing through this thing to kind of help pass the time while while you're waiting for your food to show up or if you're just out having a drink with some friends and you just kind of want to play a game while having other conversations, you can do that too. And, you know, if you kind of look now, the these types of games are gaining in popularity and they're being played out more in social places. So, you know, if you're playing the game, chances are you're going to draw some attention to yourself, which is kind of cool too. So this game, again, it just, it just makes it that much fun and it's very social. And if I look at this game from a family perspective, it's the same way. It's very social. And you have everybody together and you're spending time together and, and you know and it's and it's again because the game is so simple it you can anybody can play this at any age 
and some of you know if younger kids if they can't read numbers they can certainly match uh, they can match uh, shapes so they'll be able to do that and you can also mess around with this game and if you choose to not uh, use it to play like the game pairs you could modify this game to uh, use it to play with younger players you can come up with your own rules and I'm sure that uh, that James Ernest from cheap ass games would almost encourage that because he's very creative and he's very unique in his thinking and he'd probably be like yeah you know kind of come up with your own variant to play this game so if not James I'm sorry but uh, that's kind of one of the things that I was feeling with this game if you wanted to try and play it with younger players so anyways I like this game a lot it's very fun it's very simple it's a great concept of how this game is made with the deck construction. It's a fun pressure lock game that you can take and play with you anywhere. So if you are interested in playing pairs, take the time to pledge for it on Kickstarter right now. Okay, so again, in the description of this video, I will have the link down there. And uh, take the time to support cheap ass games, bring this game to life, have it in your house, take it with you, and take a lot of time pressing your luck. All right, that's it for now. Join me again next time as we take a look at another game and we see how it makes it to the table.